recent crack in the crypto markets hasn't spared the world of NFTs either. Some of the biggest and most popular NFT collections like the Bored Ape Yacht Club and other deeds have lost between 30 to 60% in the last seven days. What's led to this decline and is this a buying opportunity? Let's find out from Crypto Slam's NFT relations strategist Yehuda Pecha on what he's looking at on NFT Insider. Great to see you again, Yehuda. Good morning, Mega. Great to be here with you again. We are seeing hefty losses on collections like the Mutant Ape Yacht Club, Other Deeds, which is also from the board ape creator Yuga Labs, uh, which was launched just about two weeks ago. That's lost more than half its value. What explains these corrections? It's kind of the perfect storm for Yuga Labs. Uh, first, you have their really poorly executed Other Deeds public sale. And then we entered a pretty significant bear market. And on top of that, Yuga Labs gave each ape and mutant a free plot of land. So people bought those, the apes and the mutants, with a plan to sell them after claiming that land. Uh, it, the, the rarest lands are worth hundreds of ETH, so for many people it was worth buying the ape or mutant at that high cost, like up to 150 ETH even, just for the chance of, of scoring one of those land, uh, land plots. That type of trading action is really common after a project releases new NFTs. So the, the correction that we're seeing, it's pretty typical. And, and I think many NFT investors plan for it. I would say nobody in the NFT space is actually concerned about that price. Uh, if anything, people are anxious to buy more at this discounted price. Do you think this recalibration of the markets would shake out the weaker projects? Should one be buying the declines in big NFT names? It is. Everyone's been preparing for a major shakeout. It's almost become a, a legendary tale or a prophecy that uh, in the future, 99% of all the current NFT projects, they'll be worthless. They'll be worth zero. And maybe that's now. People should be really cautious because I'm not so sure that the bottom is in. But if you had your eye on some of the bigger name projects like a CyberKong, like a MetaHero, like a Kutars, this is definitely a better time to buy than during the actual bull runs. Uh, we at Crypto Slam, we're actually part of the process of discovering how low these prices can get. Two weeks ago, we launched a new marketplace called Dropping Now, where the price of every listing will keep dropping all the way to zero. So we're seeing prices that are significantly lower than the open sea floor. It's, re it's really interesting. And, and the advice I have for people is if you are shopping, just go for the lowest price wherever you can find it. But not all is lost. Azuki has had some interesting moves after its creator admitted to leaving his older projects in the lurch. The floor price fell to about 10 ETH after that announcement, but it's back to trading about 50% higher from those levels. What do you think? Yeah, it's typically a death sentence when the trust is broken between the, the project creators and the investors. That might be the case with Azuki too, but so far they're holding up really decently. I, I'm just not convinced with all the anonymous sales and purchases that we're seeing, that it's not actually the Azuki project team itself propping up the prices. Uh, personally, I'm looking for and I'm looking for and I'm rooting for trustworthy teams and builders that have a track record, a great track record. So I, I wouldn't touch those Azuki NFTs myself. But an interesting point is that the Azuki founders previous project, uh, the Crypto Funks, they actually showed us that the community can, can take over a project and they can steer that project and lead it to success. And hopefully that's going to happen with Azuki. Uh, traders, NFT traders in general, they need to demand better projects and they need to demand better project leaders because as long as people are happy to hand over, you know, these millions of dollars to these anonymous teams that are offering just a picture, we'll see more stories like this and most of them will end very poorly for investors. And what about CryptoPunks? They seem to have escaped the carnage that's seen in other prominent collections. You, crypto punks, they can't be beat. They're, they're, I can't hide it. They're my favorite. Um, blue chips are considered a, a store of value and, and they're much less impacted by these bear markets. Historic NFTs even more so. And, and since again, we believe that 99% of the projects out there are going to be worth nothing. What's that 1% that's going to survive? It's the crypto punks. Um, it's the project that was the inspiration for Bored Apes and the entire profile picture craze that we're seeing. And even they're responsible for the NFT tech right now, specifically the ERC721 token standard. So crypto punks are always going to be the safest buy in NFTs because their value is in their significance and that can't be changed. Um, this is actually a, a not widely known uh, piece of info, but the first iteration of crypto punks are called B1 crypto punks. They probably cost 10 times less than the world famous crypto punks that people know of. And Really, I think they're more historic than those V2 CryptoPunks because they were actually Larva Lab's first minted NFTs. Uh, so especially in a bear market, that's what I'm working towards. Well, the V1 CryptoPunks found themselves in quite a bit of legal hot water some time ago. So very interesting history there. But like you said, quality is always going to hold out and it's going to be the barometer for the projects that do well. Thank you so much, Yehuda, for joining in as always. Thanks again.